Yeah, so thank you for the introduction. Um, as you already heard, um, what my topic is today, but probably you don't know that it's also part of a project uh, which had started already in 1998 by Professor Bob Martens and Herbert Peter. Um, this project aims to reconstruct synagogues with reference to Austria. Um, and in the end, all finished projects will be also shown little by little at the website sidox.org, which is a project from the Techni Technical University of Darmstadt. Um, well, during the next 20 minutes, I'd like to give an overview um, about what I had at the beginning, what my working process was, and of course, how I deal with um, problems. <laughs> And last but not least, I will show you what I have till now and what my next steps will be. Um, well, let me show you what my starting point um, I had a floor plan and some not very detailed photographs. Um, since my objective for the whole reconstruction was to do, or at least to try to do it as detailed as possible, um, it was absolutely essential for me to search, of course, in a lot of different archives, to ask around in mostly um, Slovenia and Hungary, and of course also on different websites. And for this, it was also very important to search for all designations Moscow Sobota had during all these years, because of course you find different um, results. Um, my research for photographs brought me very quickly to my first big issue because I was told, um, like from everybody I was in contact with about the synagogue, that the synagogue was built smaller than it was actually planned. Um, but nobody could tell if, um, if that's the truth or if it's just the fact which is handed down wrong. And also nobody could tell me if this existing floor plan is also the built version or not. Um, so before I could really start with my reconstruction, I had to check if the floor plan is, the, is also the built version or not. Um, therefore, I took buildings which, or, which already existed in the past and do still exist. So I took the Pomorski Museum, which we see on the left side, and the Evangelical Church in the middle. Um, then I checked different newer maps to get the dimensions of these two buildings, so that I was able after it to scale this historical map, which we see here from 1923, uh, as exact as possible to get the real dimension of the synagogue, which we see on the right side on the top. Uh, the result of this research was that the synagogue was built after the existing floor plan. So based on that and of course on different photographs, I was able to start with my actual 3D reconstruction. Now back to the floor plan and the information in it. At this point I think it's also important to mention that during my work I also could get um, the floor plan from the upper floor. Um, and since I knew that it was built after it, it of course facilitated my work a lot. <laughs> uh, on the ground floor there were seats for 150 people and on the upper floor uh, for 108. And it had a size from about 24 by 14 meters. But even though I had those two plans when I tried to do the walls in 3D, uh, I found out that there are some measurings and corners that couldn't fit together. Um, on a closer look, I found out that, for example, on the left side, the measurings are 10 centimeters different to the right side. <laughs> and also the corner on the left side down here, um, they are on the ground floor different measurings than on the upper floor. I mean, I compared it with different photographs and I couldn't see anything why it should be on the upper floor different than on the ground floor. Um, but what we can see is the symmetrical construction. And yeah, based on that and of course on photographs, I did the walls. Um, 
Where I also couldn't find any closer photograph was from the south side. But um, during my work, some night probably, I found a photograph from the area and well it's not very detailed so it's like an old, it's an old postcard but the thing I could see was that the shape on the south side is the same as on the north facade so for me it was um, confirmed that these two sides are the same as I assumed so when I had that cleared and all the walls done I worked on the facade or rather with the height which I'd say brought me to my biggest challenge during my 3D work. Um, well, almost every object has, a, let's say, a special detail which isn't um, obvious at the first sight. But let me show you this with some examples. So the facade and the height of the building. Um, first of all, it can't be that difficult with these structured elements on the facade. But this was a very, very wrong assumption. And to get the first approximate dimension, since there's no section plan existing, or I couldn't find any till now, <laughs> uh, I'm very lucky that I could see the original door, which we see on the right side in Moskasovota. Because there I could measure the door, and so based on that, I could see uh, how often the height of the door fits into the height of the building. So just to get a rough estimate about it. After this, I still had to do many steps forward and backward to finally come to a result, which in my opinion, in my opinion, looks very similar to the original one. And one day I changed again a little bit of the height and also the angle on the top, which was also a little bit difficult. <laughs> but <coughs> then suddenly everything fit together, with, which was, of course, an uh, break through my process. Um, because at this point I knew that the ground shape was found and the height was confirmed and I could go on step by step with the details. Like for example the railing at the women's gallery um, which was also a little bit tricky because at this point in this case I had to make the experience that if you're to focus on a particular photograph in your imagination how it should be, <laughs> then it's really necessary to get distance because then you're able to see again the difference and how it really is. Because first I assumed that these um, fields which we see um, are the same and also the distance in between are equal. But it didn't work out with when I tried to do it uh, with the floor plan. So then I took all photographs I had from the interior and then I found out that, um, well, the distance between uh, above the columns are, for example, bigger than the other ones. And in the middle part, the second one from the right and also the second one from the left, uh, from these fields, are a little bit smaller than all others. I don't know why, but yeah. <laughs> but then everything fits together. Um, yeah, and then I could finish this part of the synagogue. Uh, the benches, for example, are like an own chapter because, well, when I visited Moscow Sobot, I was very lucky to hear that an that I also can see the original benches in Celo. Um, so I went there and I think almost all of them from the main floor are still existing, but only one from the women's gallery. On a closer look, I recognized that there are different types of them. Um, for example, some have this uh, part which you see on the left uh, is filled, some others not. Um, some benches have the sides are higher than the others and yeah, some more <laughs> details. <laughs> um, and so it was a little bit difficult to find the original spot of every bench since there are just some benches which we can see on interior photographs. 
Another fascinating fact is that if I'm right, um, but please correct me if that's wrong, um, that the benches are also kind of marked. So for example, the benches on the ground floor um, have three of these stripes, which I think is uh, in reference to the number of divine. And, uh, and on the upper floor there are just two stripes, which means in symbolic separation. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would find it interesting because, they're, but they are different, so, yeah. I just thought there must be a reason why they are different on the upper front, ground front. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the lamps, which we can see here with very much details, um, was also kind of unbelievable for me, as we also discovered them in Seele with the benches, because I never heard before that they also could still exist. Uh, therefore, I also can do, or at least try to do, it as detailed as possible. But until now, I didn't work on them. Uh, a part of the original fence is also still existing. Uh, in this case, it was quite easy to reconstruct since I knew um, how it is built and also the measurings. But of course, also if this wouldn't exist anymore, then also this small part would be very difficult to do. Uh, for my reconstruction, it was of course necessary to see Mosca Sobota and more precisely the existing objects. Because it, otherwise it would be much more difficult, of course, to do the reconstruction only based on photos and it won't look that much similar uh, to the original scenario. But for example, um, the staircase or also the interior on the west side and some other parts um, where there is no proof how they looked like. I have to make references of course to other synagogues in this period, especially to Baumhahn synagogues. One day I also got photos from the demolition, which we can see here, um, which are also very important for my thesis. Um, because the left photograph, for example, is the only one I found from the northeast side. And also because in them uh, it is possible to see the construction behind the facade and the roof. And since they are from 1954, they have a much higher resolution than the ones from the year of construction, 1907 and 1908. And therefore, it is possible to see the facade and, of course, a lot of details much better. Um, my opinion on a 3D modeling is that in the end, uh, the more details, the more realistic it seems. But, of course, it takes a lot of time to get it all done. So, finally, my master thesis will also include um, how I reconstructed the different parts of the synagogue in Archica. Also because if there is, for example, someone who finds out that I did something wrong or photographs um, appear which show that things are different and I reconstructed them, then it's possible to uh, change the objects and to update the 3D model. Uh, so till now it looks like this from the inside, but please don't mind that I uh, just brought you a white model because the materiality will follow in the future and this was, will be done in a different program and therefore it's better to finish the work in ARCAD. And unfortunately, as you see, um, there are still corrections to make and also details missing. Like for example, of course, all the paintings around um, the doors on the women's gallery, the organ, and also some smaller details. Um, for example, the direction of the wood fiber, which will be important for the materiality later on, or also things like the door handle. Um, later on, also, the buildings around, 
because of course it's also very important to see how the synagogue was situated. Uh, yeah, it is kind of a puzzle to take from every photograph a little bit and put it together with all information which be, which could be collected in just one 3D model. Uh, but it's also a very great opportunity to show almost forgotten buildings, I'd say, um, all the way around and of course with all details, which are invis invisible in existing photographs. The question for me in this context was also if there are some photographs which are maybe more valued than others. Um, well, of course, photographs of a high resolution are very, very helpful, but in the end, I find really every photograph has its great importance for a work like this because you always have to compare it, and every photograph has, a, let's say, other detail which is more visible than others. Um, and that's also why I always kept looking for more material and on some days it had paid off. So also thanks at this point to everyone who supported me during my research, mostly of course in Slovenia and Hungary. And I think or hope that you could have good, got a good idea um, what the difficulties and also benefits of a reconstruction like this could be or is. Uh, yeah, well, thank you for listening. <laughs>